The next thing that I would like to draw your attention to is you know the strange uh, uh, thing right. The, so, there is you look at the circuit there is gm1, gm2. Yeah, so, there is basically you can see that there is gm1, gm2 uh, you know all this uh, all these uh, you know uh, 100 things here. But surprisingly the unity gain frequency is only dependent on so this is uh, uh, gm1 uh, times vi and this is uh, uh, r1 the unity gain frequency is nothing but gm1 over cc okay so, I mean an obvious thing is that you know you have this such a complicated circuit, but you know how come the unity gain frequency is such a simple expression, there must be some intuition to intuition to this correct right. So, uh, so uh, the intuition is the following. So, at frequencies much beyond the uh, 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 so for uh, omega much much larger than the dominant pole frequency correct. Where is all this current flowing? For frequencies much larger than omega d, where is all the current flowing? It is going through the capacitors, right. So, nothing is flowing through the resistances. So, I am going to delete R1, okay. All right. So, all this current is going through the capacitance. So, the capacitance has got two parts one is C1, the other one is the Miller multiplied version of Cc. So, where is all that current flowing? Cc. Correct. So, this current is approximately g m 1 v i correct. Now, uh, uh, so what is the voltage across C c g m 1 v i by s times C c ok all right. So, remember for large phase margin what should g m 2 be? For large phase margin g m 2 must be large correct. In other words, if the unity gain frequency is much smaller than the second pole, then g m 2 must be very very large right. So, approximately what I mean so if g m 2 I mean uh, in the limit g m 2 is what uh, is uh, let us say is infinity. So, what comment can you make about v x if g m 2 is infinity? It is it is 0 right. So, what is the output voltage? The output voltage is nothing but Vx plus the drop across the capacitor. So, uh, basically this is nothing but uh, uh, the, the output voltage is approximately equal to g m 1 times V i by S C C correct. So, you can think of it I do not know how many of you still remember any of this stuff remember that let us say this is z, if this g m is very large, what kind of control source is this? Current control voltage source, what is the trans impedance? It is z. So, basically this is i then this must be i times z correct. In this case what is z? 1 over S C C. Is this clear? So, So, in this case, so basically the output voltage is g m 1 over s c. So, what is the unity gain frequency of this transfer function? At what frequency does the, uh, the, uh, the gain go to unity? This basically this approximation is telling us that this is, is uh, nothing but g m 1 over c c. All right. Let me ask you, you know, uh, uh, some quick questions, right? So let's say, uh, you know, I have, uh, uh, you know, this two-stage op amp, and uh, uh, evidently, uh, let's say, the phase margin I have is too much, right? Okay, I have a very large phase margin, and consequently, the bandwidth, the closed loop bandwidth is, the closed loop bandwidth is small, right? So if I want to increase the uh, the uh, uh, if I want to double the bandwidth, 
right and I am not worried about the hit in the phase margin because I have so much of it anyway. Uh, what are the what uh, what all can I do to double the bandwidth the unity gain bandwidth? I can double gm1 right or I or I can reduce uh, you know cc by a factor of 2 right. In either case uh, you know the unity gain bandwidth will approximately double right and the phase margin will will become poor right. So, if now if you want to restore the phase margin what should I do? If I want to keep the unity gain frequency the same right which is double of what I had earlier, but I, the phase margin is obviously reduced. If I want to re restore the phase margin what should I do? Increase increase gm does that make sense ok all right. So, uh, the next thing that I would like to talk to you about is uh, you know last thing that I would like to mention with regard to uh, this compensation is the following. Remember that uh, uh, the uh, the poles before compensation were the roots of are the roots of this polynomial 1 plus s times r 1 into c 1 plus 1 plus g m 2 r 2 times c mu plus r 2 times c 2 plus c mu ok plus s square r 1 r 2 times c 1 c 2 plus c 2 c mu plus c mu c 1 ok. All right. So, both these poles uh, will be on the left half as plane right and they will be comparable. ok. So, they will be all right. Now, after compensation what does this become? Uh, so, what are the denominator? 1 plus s r 1 g m 2 r 2 c c plus I mean basically it is this times 1 plus s by omega naught which is uh, what is omega naught g m g m 2 by c 1 plus c 2 by c c. All right. So, what comment can we make about uh, uh, this pole in relation to these guys? This is the dominant pole. So, where is that pole going to be? It is going to be omega d right. What about the other pole? Pardon? And uh, uh, so, the, the other pole right as you can see here this uh, this 1 over g m 2 if you look at the product of these two poles right what is the product of the uh, two poles after compensation? How did we get this uh, 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 you know uh, this expression? We basically said r 1 r 2 times c 1 c 2 plus c 2 c c plus c c c 1 right. So, what come I mean so if you look at the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, what do you call uh, the uh, uh, the coefficient of the square term, what comment can you make about uh, the product of the time constants? No, because we have introduced c c right ok. 
yeah so basically the the product has decreased correct but, uh, and uh, the uh, but it is only reduced by uh, factor cc correct or the product of the poles is reduced right the time constants have, the product of the time constants has has increased right but the product of the time constants has increased only by a factor cc whereas one of the poles is reduced by a factor cc so the the uh, the uh, the other pole basically is uh, is uh, going to be much higher than is going to be much higher than the original poles th uh, that we have okay all right hmm. another way of thinking about it is basically if you think that these two poles are comparable right what is the uh, uh, you know uh, if you assume these two poles are comparable this is nothing but this this is not, this is nothing but let's call this uh, let's call this expression 1 plus s over p1 times 1 plus s over p2 so p1 p2 is basically 1 over 1 over r1 r2 c1 c2 plus c2 c mu plus c mu c1 right so if p1 and p2 are uh, you know roughly at the same frequency right then they are uh, each one of them is approximately at 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 this frequency okay now whereas our second pole now is at 1 over gm2 uh, it's basically at gm2 by c1 plus c2 plus c1 c2 over c okay so now you know what do you think which of these things uh, 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 is is larger see this is roughly of the order of if you take the square root of those quantities it's roughly of the order of if c1 c2 you know c mu all of these are roughly the same order this is approximately of the order of r times any of those parasitic capacitors whereas this is of the order of gm over you know the, those capacity I mean, cc is large so c1 c2 over cc can be you know uh, very small compared to c1 or c2 so all i'm saying is that this this term and this term are of roughly the same order of magnitude whereas 1 by r what comment can we make about 1 by r versus gm2 which is larger gm2 will be much larger so what comment can you make about the location of these poles versus the, the second pole after compensation it will be much higher so basically you can see that the poles which were here earlier have now split one going you know uh, 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 becoming dominant whereas the other one goes goes higher right this is actually a very good thing because earlier when we did this uh, uh, dominant pole compensation we said well we'll take a big capacitor and pull it in parallel with one of the existing capacitors and one of the poles will move down correct so what's happening here though that is definitely by uh, by doing this miller compensation uh, two things have happened one the, of course the, one of the poles has moved very low as you would like but fortunately the other pole has also moved higher correct so therefore making it you know a better situation as far as phase margin is concerned so sometimes this miller compensation is also is for this reason is also what is it's called pole splitting compensation Okay. 